Hello, ladies and gents. Boys and girls, welcome to Tales with TR, episode 200A. I'm your host, Terry Ryan Jr., just back from Halifax, Nova Scotia, and Binghamton, New York. Thanks to everybody in Binghamton. I think I've already talked about Halifax a little bit, from Brian Lang to all the volunteers, uh, teammates I had down there, and uh, we raised a lot of money. I know going into the game, we already had 31,000. Someone asked me, was that over the course of the last few years? No, that was just this particular weekend. And it's, a, it's, you know, it's a local game down in Binghamton. It's mostly buddies that played college um, or high school. The odd guy played a little bit of pro. And, you know, I was the special guest. How special I was, but I was the guest. And, yeah, we raised money. Like, you know, it's sometimes I go to these things and... I explained in Moncton last year, we raised a million bucks. Yeah, we had, we had 20 like superstars. We had like Jeremy Roenick and Denny Savard, Tessa Bonham, Andrew Shaw. Oh my God. Brandon Proust, right down the, you know, they were all legit NHL players or um, Olympians, whatever have you, whatever. It, it was um, awesome. But, you know, when you do that and you. You can generate more money for what they did down in Binghamton, man. They put it together. It's really a, a local thing. Um, other than me, I don't know anybody else that was brought in. Um, well, there wasn't. I was there. No other pro guys or anything. So, you know, uh, expectations are low. And for us to raise, I, I can't remember. I think it was 50-something overall because the game gets played and then you auction off stuff and everything. But it was uh, just great. They treated me awesome. And we ate uh, afterwards. At, uh, at a local brewery. Oh, God, what was it? You know what? What was the name of that awesome brewery? Let's see. Archives. Archive. Got to mention it because they treated me awesome. And it was, uh, okay, Factory Factory by Beer Tree Brewing. Factory by Beer Tree Brewing uh, was absolutely phenomenal. Just a great spot. Good food. Awesome atmosphere. And uh, there was actually another place I ate I want to mention. I don't always do this, but it was uh, it was uh, real. God, I can't, can't remember. I will. Uh, I'll figure it out. Anyway, uh, I'll, I'll figure it out by the end of the pod. I got to take a pause here now in a minute anyway. A anyway, it was just a fucking awesome time down there. So thank you. Now, guys. So. Picture it, man. Wednesday, Thursday, I'm in Halifax. Friday morning, I, 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 I take a plane to, to Toronto. And the reason, and, and I drove five hours to Binghamton in a rent a car. Why? There was a group I did a cameo for, a minor hockey team. They're from Kitchener, and they drove actually to meet me in the morning. Um, like I got in at 7 30 a.m. I said, guys, I got to get to Binghamton. So, but they had like a tournament this past weekend. I think it was the Ontario Provincials. And uh, they were like, well, we'd love to meet you, but it's going to mean a lot if you could possibly do it Friday. So I said, well, guys, the only way I can is if I fly into Toronto instead of Binghamton. I don't mind the drive anyway, especially when you're going over the border. It can often take less time and, 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 and fuss than in an airport. So I was like, sure, if you guys are there, I'll drive. No problem. You rent me a car. I said to the people from Binghamton, Brian Lang and company that brought me down, Hockey for Hope was the... Uh, event in Binghamton. Hockey fights cancer. So anyway, this group came out, met me all good, but there was a bit of a problem with the, with the rental car because they'd rented it for me from the United States. And I guess it doesn't transfer. I needed my license and my credit card. So whatever I paid for it and they'll reimburse me. So I got down there. It was a good time, but I left Halifax. Well, the, the event in Halifax was over at like 12, 1230 when we got in. And then I, we had to be up at 2 because we were leaving to go to the airport at 3. So I didn't get much, well, any sleep that night. And then anyway, on the way back, I got to the airport yesterday. And uh, fuck, I was, I was for some reason, I, I didn't have a flight booked, right? They did book me one, but there was a mix-up. It was Air Canada's fault. So I had to wait around all day long till 9 at night. And then that got delayed till 9.30. That got delayed till 10.30. When we got on the plane at 10.30, that got delayed till 12.00. When we got here, the, the stuff coming off the plane, because it was icy, took an extra 30 minutes, they said. So by the time I walked in, my door was 6.06 a.m. today. 
And um, I knew I had to be up because we were going out to see. I was taking Danielle, uh, my ex, uh, Penny Lane's mom, and Penny Lane out to see the eclipse. Now, I just got back. Point is, you see, during all the – that's like a typical – trip lately now i leave on wednesday right now it's monday night right i just got settled on wednesday morning at six i leave to go to winnipeg so now you know why i can't book guests all the time right it's just real hard to navigate around and if i wanted to today i didn't know when i was going to be free none of that so i do have terry ryan senior coming on tomorrow i know a lot of you love at least like some of you love seniors banter so i'm going to I think of some good existential questions, some good hockey questions, some sport questions in general, and just some, you know, some random trivia. On top of all that, look at this. If you're online. See my tooth? I was eating a protein t- teen bar today, an awesome bar. Aloha, they're called. Highly recommend. Highly recommend. I met the uh, owner, Brad. I can't remember his last name. Met him in Binghamton, gave me a box of these things. They are fucking awesome. Anyway, but they're really sticky. They're like hard protein bars. Like um, they pack a big punch, right? Like a, a great thing for like in between periods of a hockey game, right? Not too thick and not digestible, but packs a nutritious punch. But anyway, they're hard. So they, they pulled out my cap, my, my crown, is it called? And I look like something out of a fucking Alfred Hitchcock fucking movie or a Stephen King novel, novel at least. So I had to get that fixed tomorrow. So tomorrow I wake up, I get that fixed. I got two cameos to do. Don't laugh. People uh, are looking forward to them and the deadline's tomorrow night. Then I have two podcasts to do. My number, my B, right, with Senior. And then I'll have, uh, I'm appearing on another podcast that I've had this promise for like three years in the afternoon. Can't remember the name of it, God. Uh, I'll advertise it. Follow my Instagram. And then I do the Jason Greger show. Then I take Penny Lane to soccer before the Greger show and after. I mean, I it's hard to move. Anyway, so I'm going to get, but, but I do have guests booked. And uh, Senior is going to come tomorrow because it's an easy layup. And then next week I'm here all week. And then I fly to Sarnia for one day and back. It's a little bit easier. Um, I've been gone four or five days a week. After this, for the next few weeks, it'll be like one or two days a week. So... I'll get a chance to do uh, get everything done. But to get to some questions, a lot of you wanted to know what I thought of the Rangers-Devils brawl, okay? Just start the game. I get both sides in that a lot of people were like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of down on fighting, but that was energetic. You know, should I feel bad? Literally, I had those questions. Or... Um, not like, should I feel bad? But in so many words, uh, you know, Terry, why do I uh, feel a sense of enjoyment watching that and excitement and I'm not advocating for fighting in hockey? Well, I'll tell you, because the place was going mad. It's human emotion. Whatever sport you're watching and you see that many people, 20,000 people going bonkers. Everybody kind of knew something was going to happen. It was premeditated, right, With because of the hits that Matt Rempe threw two games ago. He didn't fight last time. McDermott starts. He starts. So you had an idea. Now, here's my thought on it, guys, really. I, I don't want I, – I think at this point the old argument for fighting or against fighting is getting really old. It really is. It, it's getting monotonous, boring, and old. If you're for it, you're for it. If you're against it, you're against it. But here's the thing. Like, if you're rallying against it, and some people do on Twitter, or whatever, I mean, that's where you go now to do it, uh, you know, or their media show, whatever, and to each their own. But when I look at that, watch it again. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just Google anything simple line brawl, uh, Rangers, Devils. It was only a few days ago. So, puck drops, Rempe goes McDermott, which was expected. I didn't expect all four other guys to fight. I don't even know if they did, if you look at it. Everybody's saying that, but I, I maybe they thought they knew there was a fight going to happen, but I don't think everyone on the ice did. Some guys were caught by surprise, but they're also caught in the moment, and they're saying, fuck it, I'll drop my mitts. As a good teammate would, so I got no problem with that. Of course I don't. Um, and if you're not for it, then the reps threw four guys of the five on each team out, other than the guys who started it, but that's the rule, right? Any fight after the first fight in a one stoppage of play. So they could do that if they wanted, and they did. Am I for that or against it? I don't know. The game's going one. I, I wouldn't have done it, but I understand. So that's really, I got no problem with that. But when you're asking me, 
So if you look at all those people, which is how many you guess, I'm thinking 95 percent of the 18, 19, 20,000, whatever sellout is in Madison Square Garden are going fucking mad. They don't even they don't like it. They fucking love it. Right. They love it. Now you get the players. Now, in every recent poll, players, players, do you want fighting? Do you want even guys like fucking Debrinkat, Patrick Kane, whatever, guys who don't do a lot of fighting or need to, they still kind of like it. They don't have to be worried about it. And if you got a fighter, look at Ryan Reeves when he fights. Look at Austin Matthews on the bench going fucking bonkers. Guys like that. Matthews knows he doesn't have to fucking fight, but it's nice to have a guy like that on your team who can. That can once in a while, quote unquote, protect you in one way or another. Reeves is a good hitter, too. And he's playing a lot better. I'd have him on the playoff roster. Now, the way I look at it is that. So if if the players en- are enjoying it and the fans are enjoying it and you're some partial fan, new age fan or, that walks into the rink and hates it, why should I listen to you? Right? Like, to put it in perspective, I'm a basketball fan. I didn't. I mean, I guess I played a little bit growing up, but not in any level to be a prospect. I don't know the nuances of the game like it would be inside a pro or a NCAA dressing room. I don't. I like basketball. Now, let's just say I got a problem with the free throw or the uh, three-point line. I don't think that they should allow three-pointers. But I go to a Golden State uh, versus Lakers game, and you got LeBron Curry. And these guys are going back and forth. They're going at each other. And, you know, there's not going to be fights, but let's just say we're just talking a rule. Let's say a three-pointer. Curry takes 10 in a row, and he makes them all, and they win by 28 points. No, say they win by two points, right? And it's a good fucking thing that all his shots were three-pointers because if they were worth two points, they'd have lost by double digits. Now, the place loves it. The basketball players love it. They're not they're subcon- they're not thinking about it because that's the rule, right? Like those hockey players, they're not thinking like, should we be fighting hockey? They're saying it, it's a fucking rule. And there is, it is a penalty, by the way. People going, you're allowed to do it. It's a fucking penalty. It's a five minute at least and a game ejection for those people. So did you stop saying it's just allowed? It's not allowed. It's a fucking penalty. What we're questioning is how long the penalty should be. And I think that was fine what happened. But anyway, if I come in and watch an NBA game, Golden State versus Lakers, place is going mad. Players got no problem with the rules, neither the fans. Why do people need to listen to me? Like if I just said, you know, fuck that, that's stupid. There shouldn't be a three-point uh, three line. Okay. Now shut the fuck up and go to bed, Terry. You're, you're not a traditionalist in the sport. You're not a – well, traditionalist would be the wrong word because it's not all traditionalist. But, you know, you're not an expert. You didn't grow up around basketball. Who are you to say? You're just a part-time fan. And I'd say, exactly. You're correct. No one else has a problem with the three-point line that's involved in the game. Why would I? So why do we as fans and players and, and, and people that are involved in the culture, that why do we give a fuck? Why do we give a fuck? What Joe from Rosedale Place thinks. You know? What do I care? What the manager of Randy River at the mall thinks. Am I missing something? So everybody on that ice was into it. It turned out to be a great hockey game with a fucking unbelievable start. A buzz that we haven't heard of in years in the NHL. Say what you want about Matt Rempe. He's water cooler talk. It's his first year. It's Connor Bernard's first year. And I think Rempe has been talked about more. You might say for the wrong reasons. I don't know. Rempe knows in his head he's not Bernard. Another side argument, but whatever. He's going out and he's doing what he can do. Leave it up to him. He's a fucking man. These are men that want to do it. So who the fuck are you, Joe from Rosedale Place, who barely watches the sport, to say that you're disgusted and the game should should change and we we should be embarrassed that we watch this bullshit? Yeah, well, turn it off, you fucking asshole. There's lots of things I don't like. I don't immerse myself in them. 
I don't understand. Even even some thing, even some things I don't hate, but I don't love. Like I don't love the sport of cricket. I don't know. There's just no one around here that plays it. Every time I look at it, there are interesting plays. I think the way they pitch outfielders with no glove, like I don't know, even if they're called outfielders, but I'm just not into it. So I don't give a fuck and I don't watch it. Right? I, I, I just don't understand what the problem is. What do I care? Australian rules football is really rough. I'm not into it. I don't have time for that. I probably would if I lived there. I got nothing against it. But who am I to say they got to fucking tone it down in that sport? When I don't fucking play it. I could look at one of those games and say it's just as brutal as hockey. Okay. But I don't want to change the rules of that sport. But some people, man, and it's all social media driven. If there was none of that, you would never. Hold on one sec. I'm mad I'm just doing a podcast. What's up? I'm literally on the air as we speak. People can hear you. Hey, buddy. How are you doing? That. Well, I mean, if they can hear you in the background. But I, I just answered because I didn't want you to feel ignorant. I, I didn't answer your last two calls. I literally have like three minutes out of every day that I can. I have free will. So... When is the home opener? September? September or first week of October. Okay, Matt, um, let me get back to you. I really, I really will. Give me a text to remind me so I got it sitting there. Oh, hey, I'd love to. I've been doing that every weekend since January, uh, something of the sort, and I've been enjoying it. So the chance to do it back in Cornell would be awesome. Okay, baby. Now we just got to talk cheddar. So just, uh, just get get back to me. Shoot me a text so I know. Uh, so I have the message, and I'll I'll literally get back to you tomorrow. Okay, buddy. Thank you. I'm sorry about that. My old goalie, Matt Cole in Cornell, BC, still out there. Uh, I think he brought the junior team back to Cornell, which is awesome. <laughs> and of course. It'll be great to go back to Cornell and uh, back to BC. I fucking love it out there and just don't get back enough. And uh, anyway. We know hockey games move fast, but with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NHL, you can score faster than anything happening on the ice. This week, new customers can bet five bucks and get 200 instantly in bonus bets. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code THPN. New customers can bet 5 bucks to get 200 instantly in bonus bets only on DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus, age varies by jurisdiction, void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.com slash hockey for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gambling resources. NHL and the NHL Shield are registered trademarks of the National Hockey League. Copyright NHL 2024, all rights reserved. I just, so for me, I even respect, I mean, there's lots of people that are traditionalists in hockey and, you know, they, they see it. Not everybody, like, I'm not clinging to fighting. I don't tune in to watch fighting. I still like watching a tilt. Of course I do. It's emotion. That was, I don't know how anybody who's played a sport could look at what happened and not be kind of fired up. Right. I saw some people in the media who are like friends of mine. So, I mean, I think I said, disagree with lots of people. I think, you know, life would be boring if we agreed with everyone, but you know, and they're the first ones to tweet. This is bullshit. This is garbage. I don't know. If it is, those people paid money for the ticket. Do you think, okay, you would ask them all. Do you guys think you got your money's worth? Or would you rather come to a game that that didn't happen at the beginning? How many people do you think out of 20,000 would say, I'm glad I came to this game? 
I'm going to say 19,998. And the other two were taking a shit when the poll went out. Or gone to get a fucking hot dog. Place going bonkers. Everybody across platforms loves it. Pat, Mc- Pat McAfee show. Stephen A's talking about it. And what we can do that in our sport, and they don't do it in any other ones. And I think it separates our sport in a beautiful way from the other ones. Yeah, hockey's the roughest. Now, put on some skates and go out there and dangle like Patrick Kane or Connor McDavid. The ultimate display of finesse and skill. Stick handling. Toe dragon, Michigan, whatever, with skates on. It's a beautiful sport. And, and... Go next to my goalie and I'll drop my gloves and fucking limb you. That's our sport. And I'm proud to have played it. And all these people chiming in like it was a bad thing when the place is going bonkers. Who the fuck are you to talk? That's uh, that's it. I just don't get it. And people are, I I'm, I'm, I'm really am open-minded. I'm losing my mind on here now because I'm worked up. But I really am open-minded. But for those people that say, this is bullshit, this is garbage, maybe just say, you know, I kind of disagree. Let's have a, have, a, have a chat. What an ignorant way for people like me that went out and did it one year 34 times. In my career, hundreds. If you count fucking all those exhibition and well, probably hundreds anyway. But all those exhibition and shit, camp, dropping your mitts, getting dirty, going out for beers with the boys, showing up, maybe scoring, getting some confidence, getting respect. I'm friends with Taitomi to this day, kicked the shit out of me three three times. The fuck do I care? So I don't need you worrying about me when I did it. And I love that I did it. Like, who are you protecting? And that's it. It's the difference of opinion is one thing. But it's when people come out and like really mock the sport that are media. You're in the media. Well, they shouldn't allow fighting. They don't. It's a fucking penalty. We do it anyway because we love it. Now take your pen and shove it up your hole. Fuck. Sick of it. It's so monotonous. You don't like it, you don't like it. Sit down and shut the fuck up. Anyway. Get a bit worked up. Trust me, some of my friends hate fighting. In hockey. In hockey. Well, I guess if you you hate it in hockey, you're probably going to hate it everywhere else. But, you know, I'll sit down and watch the game. And they might go, yeah, see, I just don't understand this. Like, why are they doing that when this guy, and I'll explain it to them, and I know, Terry, but I'd just as soon not see it. Fine, that's a difference of opinion. But coming out and going, these guys are fucking thugs. This is bullshit. Fuck them, garbage sport. Well, then don't tune in, you fucking soft piece of shit. Fuck. I hate it. It's what I love about our sport is that you can fight and you can dangle, and you have to do it while you're on skates. It's not easy. Even John Scott, people laugh, it shouldn't have been the MVP or whatever All-Star game. John Scott had come into your beer league and make you look like a fucking joke. Fuck, man. It's hard to do on skates, play pro hockey. Yet, guys drop their gloves and fucking these people, these fucking freedom fighters, platform seekers, right? What do you do? Oh, my name is Mickey. Where are you from, Mickey? Me, I'm from Roanoke, West Virginia. Went to my first hockey game. What do you think? Well, the fighting's bullshit. You got to get rid of it. Oh, do we? Why? Because you just went to your first game and you're a lawn bowling fan? What is it? How about this, Jimmy? Pick another sport before trying to change mine. And I think that's what gets me. Is that like, they think they're going to change it and they don't, like, I, I don't know. Like I said, there's a thing. There's all kinds of things that I don't agree with. Um, and some sports, of course, I'll get worked up. I don't know. I don't know if it came to say baseball and steroids, right? That's that's a platform that kind of goes outside the sport. Not all the players are good with that. It's definitely something the media can chime in on. And well, the media can chime in on anything, but something that. People in the media and outside might know a little bit more about. Oh, wait, what's this? Steroids are going on. Okay, now you can form this opinion because it's not part of the sport. It wasn't supposed to be. Not every player agrees or whatever. But that's different than me going, what the fuck, man? This is bullshit. 60 feet between bases, whatever it is, 90, is it? 90 feet between bases, 60 feet to the, to the 
mound. Fuck this. Let's start a fucking team and change the rules. This fucking bullshit, the size of the baseball. It should be the size of the softball. Fuck them. You know what? Just don't watch if you don't like it. I don't know. <laughs> 24 minutes. That's it. <laughs> I just went to see the eclipse, by the way. And, and listen, listen, listen. For those of you who have been listening in Ontario, um, so we went to see it here. The kids didn't have the day off. People freaking out. First of all, it was like some doomsday was going to happen. You watch the media going, oh, we got to get through this. Get through what? A fucking eclipse. But now I do, of all the days people are going, kids shouldn't have the day off. This bullshit. They didn't hear. I believe they did in Ontario. I heard a few radio shows, a couple of them sports shows, and people were kind of wondering. But I think it's just because all the traffic and everything. Wasn't there supposed to be like 3 million extra people in Niagara? which doesn't have 3 million to begin with, or maybe right around there, Hamilton area, an area, right? So if, if that many people, and then it's going to go pitch black, even just that many people is a lot of traffic, you know, just save everybody some hassle and give the kids a few hours off. Yeah, that's the way I saw it. I didn't see it as like a politically correct left wing power grab. I, I didn't. If you're in Niagara slash Toronto, like that whole like area, is the most densely populated area of Canada. And like like I said, millions and millions of people going into the area in a time where the whole point is that the sky is going to go pitch black. And it was like right after school, right? So I, I, again, it wouldn't be me if I was making the rules, but I totally understand why they would have had a day off there in that area. Uh, if you're just in the path like you were here, I drove – an hour outside the city to a place called Goobies, uh, almost Clarenville, um, because it was a nice little area. You could look, you look up and see it. There was maybe 20 cars pulled off in this one little lot, and we saw it pretty, pretty, pretty good, pretty well. There's no need, I, I don't think, for the day off here for that. Just Unless you just, you know, you, you've got a class full of science students that want to look at the eclipse. Why miss an opportunity? And that's the other thing. Why miss an opportunity? You know, like around here, we were out there. Like some people took their kids; they had the glasses and everything. We'd had the glasses, but you know, I didn't look at it as an anti-school thing. I mean, there's different things for different reasons. But honestly, I thought about if it was noon today, I probably would have pulled Penny Eight Lane out anyway. You know, you're going to see this again when I'm dead, if you're alive by that point. She'll be 64 years old, right? And she will remember today. When she's got grandkids or whatever. So um, I enjoyed it. It was pretty cool. I always, I'll just end on this and I, <laughs> it's going to spill into religion. I don't want it to, but I find it funny though. I do when people, so there are people out there and there's quite a few of them that, that don't believe in evolution or dinosaurs. Okay. Now it could be religious. It could not be religious. I don't know. Most of you are probably religious because you read the old Testament of the Bible, but I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying it's funny. It's funny to me. It's, it really is that you, you, you'll choose not to believe that, right? No, the earth is 6,000 years old. Those dinosaur remains are bullshit. It's a big, it's a big um, scam. It's a conspiracy theory that's been going on since 1830 when people started speculating it, when Charles Darwin figured out, went to the Galapagos, Galapagos Islands and figured out survival of the fittest and all that stuff and how evolution happened and all the bones that they got to, all of that and people are willing, you know the bones I mean in museums that clearly we took this Tyrannosaurus Rex out of the ground the bones were all right there we're, we're, we get it, we, we, we got carbon dating These, this is definitely a dinosaur now you're not going to agree with that it might be because you don't like science, it might be because you're into Christianity, it might be because you're into Buddhism I don't know, but it's funny that you don't believe that and the exact same science is saying that the moon, the moon, the small little moon, a million of them can pass in front of the sun. Except our moon is so close to the earth and the sun is seven light minutes away that it's going to pass in front and it's going to appear that they're the same size so much that the moon is going to nearly block out the entire sun and it's going to be pitch black midnight in the middle of the day. You'll believe that. And go there and sit there and drive for hours and buy a hotel, whatever it is, food, take all the kids. Look, there's the eclipse. 
Okay, Dad, that was awesome. How did you know that was going to happen? Scientists. Dad, the same scientists. Shut the fuck up. Dad, the same scientists that tell me that evolution happened. Shut the fuck up, Johnny. That's for me and you to ignore. Yes, it's the same science, but I... Pick and choose what I believe in. Anyway, I just find it funny. And I'm probably talking to a large portion of you right now. And um, you probably don't find that funny and aren't going to tune in again. Well, I'm not doing it to be funny. I really, really want to know. That's the truth. I really, really want to know. Right? Evolution is as real as gravity. It's this, It's all based on science that's... Two steps forward, one step back. Two steps forward, we're, we're, we're left in the hands of the smartest people that came before us, and we're just conduits. We're, 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 we're people that are reaping the benefits, trying to be good people, but pretty much everything we do is revolves around the smartest people that came before us. And it's cool when we're out there on our skidoos and our jet skis, and driving our new SUV, all that science, the whole reason that I can even drive a car is because someone figured it all out before me. And they're doing it using science that the eclipse, we can see the eclipse. We can see the elements. We know there's a periodic table of elements. We know what they are. We got carbon dating. We got bones. We got archaeology. We have mathematics. We have Albert Einstein. We have Stephen Hawking. We have people that left us here. And yet, no, Terry, there was no dinosaurs. Now let's go see a fucking solar eclipse that I'm positive is going to happen right to the second. Anyway. <laughs> T Senior will be here tomorrow. Um, I'm going to have a bite to eat now, relax, and watch Leafs, Pittsburgh Penguins. If you're in St. John's, Newfoundland, get down to George Street. Get to Trinity Pub, TJ's Pub, Rob Roy Confusion, Martini Bar, Greensleeves Pub, and the Bull and Barrel. If you're going to go for a bite to eat, do it at Merchant Tavern, Blue on Water, or Wedgwood Cafe, home of Peter Wedgwood, and they also do catering. Strength and balance for the body and mind. Look no further than Rope Walk Lane. Ryan Power at Power Conditioning. Live, laugh, lube. Two locations of Mr. Lube here in St. John's, Newfoundland. One's on Torbay Road, one's on Kenmount Road. Chris Sparks, live, laugh, lube. Pitbull Pain Relief, the pain sticks that just don't quit. Go to pitbullpainrelief.com, see what all the fuss is about. And, of course, true hockey, take what's yours. Folks, I will be back tomorrow, and I guarantee I will have Terry Ryan Sr. with me. And uh, after that, we'll get back to a more, a somewhat more regular schedule. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for having the patience to stick with me and our show. And those of you who, love, love, who like Shorzy, we're going to have some good news that we're going to announce real, real soon. So either follow Shorzy. Uh, or me or uh, any of the boys or girls involved with the show. Thanks for tuning in. Get back to you in just a few days with more Tales with TR. Catch you guys on The Rebound.